Good morning, Solab. Uh, coming to you from Connecticut on a wonderful, um, almost warm day. And uh, I'm excited to introduce uh, the Middle Earth Realm, the, the movement from seeding a new way and moving into germinating that seed. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what that means and how I see it um, supporting your journey and um, uh, how I understand it as an alchemical process of development. So welcome everyone and um, I'm glad we made it this far. We've made it through the fire, we've gone deep into the water and we're now uh, coming together, bringing everything together to support our vision and you know in this phase of bringing it together and talking good morning Didi um, and bringing it together and and seeing all this stuff come together um, you know I recognize fully that many of us are very fiery personalities um, certainly one of the the original intentions way back 18 years ago when I was in grad school was to um, in part use this approach as a way to support uh, visionary entrepreneurs um, to get their work out and into the world. Um, of course it was a very selfish endeavor for the most part because um, I have very fiery visions and um, I spend most of my time, have, have spent most of my development and dream time and, and um, dreaming of what can be for the world um, and finding inner meaning and purpose in the world. Um, but I knew that my challenge would be sooner than later and it's now is um, earthing it, bringing it down to earth and uh, bringing it into the, the realm of humanity and serving a purpose that is um, is useful, it's helpful, it's um, it's what the world needs at this time. So it's not um, it's not an accident that I um, or a coincidence that I've seen um, a lot of uh, folks on Solab uh, feeling challenged by the Earth realm. Uh, there's a heaviness to it, right? If you're if you're a visionary person, uh, it feels like you're grounding your wings and um, feeling kind of uh, bound or held down by this realm. Um, but once you get used to uh, the reality that we are here for this and uh, how beautiful an opportunity this is to be on this planet and to serve humanity in this way, I think we all begin to um, uh, cherish it more and more. Uh, hi, Hella. Um, because, um, you know, on the top of the mountain, uh, you get this great vision, um, but there's very few people there and very, very little sustenance, right? Um, it's down in the valleys where uh, the sticker bushes and the, the bogs and the, the marketplaces and, and the crowds and all the rest are that, um, that really sustains us and calls us to be a part of the world. So. Earth realm calls us back down. It, it says, "Come back down, uh, ground your vision into something that is, um, dare I say, practical, uh, useful, and um, uh, that intuitive side of you uh, and that feeling side of you um, is being called to be a sensible side, a part that is sensing the world." Um, as we were talking about earlier, um, the watery emotional realm is about feeling and the difference between feeling and sensing as I understand it in this model is feeling is more of an internal uh, awareness or an internal reaction to or a reaction to something internal an internal experience it's like self-reflective and the water realm is great at that it's it's about um, getting in touch with that inner realm sensing on the other hand is much more about um, opening up that field of awareness to the world all around us here and really um, 
expanding the field of awareness to encompass the matrix in which we are currently in. And um, as Alan Watts talks about, to, to receive, let it bathe over you, let it come to you. Um, it's calling it to you. Um, and it's also reaching out, you know, like a, a seed when it's germinating sends out all these tendrils, um, all of these roots, these feelers, and it's drawing in, it's sensing the environment, is there enough um, moisture, is there enough emotional content here, uh, is there enough heat um, uh, from, the, from the upper world, the, the sun, um, is there enough oxygen, um, is there enough nutrients in the soil to support um, this becoming process and so much of the the soil in which a seed is in, in, uh, embedded in is going to determine uh, the nature of the outcome of the seed. Um, so it's important that we also look at what is the environment in which we're currently in. Is it supporting our vision? Is it supporting what we're becoming? Is it supporting what we um, envision for ourselves for this phase of our lives, uh, both on a personal level and a collective level? And if it's not, what nutrients need to come in to support you? And how do you draw those nutrients into your environment? Um, how do you, in other words, um, call for support from folks around you? How do you reach out across your um, you know, maybe kind of this insular sort of cellular seed-like protection self and, and start to look out a little bit and, and put feelers out saying, where is my support in the world? Where are those, my brothers and sisters that are, uh, that can see me for who I am, that can nourish me and that I too can, like in permaculture, that I too can become um, a sustainable entity, a sustainable beingness in the world um, in this mutual dance that we're all engaging in, right? So Earth Realm, middle of Earth Realm <clears throat> in astrology as I'm learning is a field of Taurus and it's the bull um, and, and it's about in part, they say it's about resources um, I think in the more kind of superficial sense they talk about in terms of money, finances and that sort of thing um, I, you know, I, I recognize the vital nature of money in our culture. Um, but I look at it a little bit deeper, of course. Um, I look at it in terms of um, uh, team, uh, support, um, uh, those that you draw around you. As they say, friends are people, friends are gifts, uh, gifts that you give yourself. And um, uh, are you gifting yourself friendships? Are you gifting yourself connection? Are you... Um, are you inviting folks in to support you? Are you sending those tendrils out to the environment, to the world all around you and calling your tribe in? Um, it's no magic beyond that. I mean, it is magic, but it's not magic beyond um, a, a very metaphysical cause and effect. If you send it out, it'll come back. What you send out comes back. So in this realm also, um, we're really being asked to, to tune into what is it that we structured in, uh, for ourselves? Um, do we have a structure? Um, it's not enough to want, it's not enough to desire, it's not enough to have big dreams or visions. This is calling us to take the music lessons, to, um, to consult the business planner, to, to talk with uh, friends about um, mutual support or teaming up or collaborating. Um, this realm is saying, let's do these things that might seem all too mundane for you, but that are absolutely vital to move forward. Um, I think once you get the hang of it and once you get used to it, all you fiery and watery types and even air types, uh, you, you'll find it very, very exhilarating. I mean, I'm, I'm finding that myself. And with Solab, um, as I've said repeatedly, just to kind of give a sense of, um, of my process, um, this began in graduate school 18 years ago or so, and it was a big vision. It was from a dream, in fact, um, and it, it, I could see it applying in so many different areas, but it took me going through the entire spiral, maybe more than a few times, uh, to really get a sense of um, the dynamics of it. I had to live into and through it 
um, to get beyond just the intellectualization of it or the inspired vision of it or even a deep sensation of it I had to actually go out into the world and start trying to make it happen which for someone like myself is a very uncomfortable thing uh, to talk to a computer programmer to talk to a business advisor a, a lawyer I mean it's um, yeah, 15 years ago when I first tried to put out Solap, um, I went through that, which you know didn't work out so well because I didn't have a Solap to support me, nor did I have Facebook or any of these networks. What I was wanting to create was a little too soon. So there's another element of Earth, um, timing. Where are you in your development? Where are you in your growth process? It's important on one level to see the quantum state that we're in all of these elements all at the same time we're both having vision we're both getting a deep and on some level a deep vision and a deep inner experience or feeling about what we're doing we get a sense of it and we see it coming together in a sort of way and we also see it out in the world in the air realm and really get a mindful sense of how um, it would engage the world what it is that we envision ourselves doing but as I found, um, no matter how much my vision seems to be clear on one level, there's also a need to be real about timing. And sometimes there is something about it that just isn't rational. Um, sometimes it isn't the right time culturally speaking. Sometimes it's not right technologically speaking. Uh, sometimes it's not right personally. I, I, cons I consulted with uh, an astrologer, an amazing woman, uh, a year ago and she said oh yeah it looks like from your chart that you're here to bring out a system and it's really good it's gonna work but it's you <laughs> and of course you know of course it's me um, but I didn't know what that meant and, I, and she didn't explain it and, I, and, I, and I'm, and I'm kinda glad she didn't maybe uh, because it kept that question over the past year she said it would take about a year when you turn 50 which I turned a month or so ago um, but she said something's going to shift for you. Now, as a logical person, as somebody still, I, I discover, all, I explore all these things, but still, what is this about astrology that sees these algorithms or patterns unfolding and can call things that succinctly, even though for 15 years now I've been really fighting this um, inability to get this moving um, with this willfulness saying, well, I, you know, I don't care that you're not letting me into the gates of heaven right now I want to get in anyway um, there's still a part of us that can be pushy and move through these things but as we look around our world and we're we're entering in it's going to be spring springtime soon um, all of a sudden things the ground looked dead before and all of these seeds and plants are all of a sudden coming back out how do they know when to come out what is it that they're sensing what is it that they're understanding about this world that invites them to begin to come out um, I, I assume that it's an awareness of all of the elements uh, that surround them temperature uh, moisture heat from the Sun and air and stuff like that different factors uh, warmth um, but they're tuning into that and there is this natural process that is beyond our conscious will that is driving us along our paths that we need to attune to so while we're gathering our teams it might not happen tomorrow it might not happen next week um, it does that doesn't stop us from bringing it all together right uh, with that we can have this implicit faith that as we organize and prepare ourselves for the eventual unfolding and coming uh, rooting down and growing up into our world in a new way that um, the world will support us uh, as we are ready and as the world is ready for us so gathering forces um, gaining support um, developing strategy uh, you know very very two-dimensional representations of a vision you have to take that watery fiery realm vision and to put it in two, di two dimensions I think for many of us feels like uh, some sort of spiritual sacrifice you know uh, I feel like um, it's too urbane or too mundane or, or too um, it's too beautiful to put in 
words or into um, a, a schematic or something, but the earth is calling us to become grounded and real. It's asking us to become simple. It's asking us to simplify and be human and, um, and meet humanity halfway, you know? Uh, um, and, and communication and collaboration, as I'm learning, um, really does depend on our ability to meet the world halfway. So a lot of this is about meeting your world halfway. Um, where are you meeting it? Um, how are you meeting it? Uh, how do you find it responding in return? I think you'll find that there is a, a very direct correlation with that. So you make a two-dimensional model, a plan, like a business strategy or plan of action. And journaling is a great way to begin that process, kind of in the first part of Earth. But in the second part, it's really about putting pencil to paper and writing out your, your allies. Who are the people already in your world that you know can support you? And if you don't have those people, who are the types of people that you want to support you? And begin your vision boarding of the types of people that you want in your life, the kind of people that you would love to have around. Start calling in your models just by writing it down. There's, there's wisdom to that. There's power to that. It's spelling is, you know, spelling out the words is, is like a magical sigils. It's spelling, casting spells. It's a, it's a form of... Um, it's a form of calling in that which you need. There's something amazing about seeing um, something so big and intangible on some level reduced down into this um, left brain sort of deductive, reasonable statement. Um, and that's a hard thing for some of us, but it's a necessary thing. Sacrifice is always, always, always um, called for in this work because there's payoff. There's payoff for the sea to go beneath the surface and get smashed in and feel completely closed in and in this darkness. I mean, if you close your eyes and simply imagine at this moment that the weight, the heaviness of being an earthbound being, like a seed under the earth, and you're deep within the mountains, you're even deep within the core of the earth, you can feel the... the um, it's, a, it's, it's an incredible feeling to have that tension around you. And, I, and I, I think that must be what a seed feels like when it's planted in the earth. And to feel that pressure, um, there is an inner pressure that is an expansive pressure that counters that outward kind of, um, you know, inward focus pressure. So when the two are in balance, there is this feeling of a dance there, right? Um, the challenge can be... Um, if your fire, your inner uh, nature uh, is weak uh, and if you'll feel like the world is crumbling on you and, and crumbling down on you. So in meditation and your qigong to get your qi up, to get your jing energy up um, and connecting with the shin energy, the heavenly energy, to, to revitalize your life force to bring the cauldrons of, of um, uh, awakening and and um, distillation to purify the inner self and to prepare yourself in the earth realm to become that conduit for something beautiful to come through is, um, is the medicine for um, this feeling of being um, burdened by the heaviness of life. So part of what I see with myself and for clients and for friends and students is this um, battle between homeostasis and change. Change is one of the most, um, it's the only constant on our, in our experience, especially on this planet. Um, but there's a very real part of us, an earthbound part of us, that craves the known, that craves homeostasis. Um, the 90-something percent of us, this basic self, this beautiful hybrid self that we're cohabitating um, with on this earth matrix experience is very much about safety, very much about security, very, very much about getting their needs met. Um, and it's, desire is not so much a thing because it's, it's just like, am I safe? Am I getting what I need? Can I eat? Can I sleep? Can I be, be safe? And this part of us needs to have a world that is familiar, 
that is homeostatic, that stays the same so that you know what's happening around you. And I believe and I, and I see that a lot of our reasons for getting stuck is because we fear change, because change means the unknown and the unknown means fear. It scares that 90 something percent of us. So for these parts of myself that go into that fear, I breathe into them, I smile into them, and I, I gift them with this connection with heaven and earth, the wisdom beyond my own conscious awareness. Um, and, I, and, I, and I give my basic self um, a shower, a, a connection, a, a, a remembrance, a higher awareness of something from the higher self, something from the, from the collective higher nature. And I bathe it over myself like sunlight, like the universe bathing over me. And I offer this, I see it bathing over my, my basic animal self, and I say, look, honey, it's okay. I know you're scared. I know this is very um, unknown for you. But I want you to know that we've got you covered, that you're in a good place, that this is something um, that um, you're not alone in that um, there is a higher wisdom guiding this process, this we know. And when this part of myself feels that and, and sees that and experiences that light from the heavens and also from the earth, Mother Earth flowing up through like a geyser of light up through me, I see it as wisdom, as light informing and lightening all of my cells. And every one of my cells is a universe within itself and, and I ask them to let go into the remembrance of who they are, of what they are part of, something greater, something bigger. And in that remembrance, I feel this effervescent remembering. And in that place, I lose the fear. I lose the struggle because the, the wisdom of the animal nature is wise is in the sense that and once it feels the connection, the reconnection, the remembrance, it, it's not trying to suffer. It doesn't want to suffer. It wants to feel pleasure. It wants to feel success. And when you give it to it with the visual, very visual, experiential, you invite it to remember something greater. And when it does, it will pay back big time. It says, thank you. Now I remember who I am. I'm reconnected with the source. Um, I can now uh, be a support for what's coming through. So that's a big part of it. Now, also in this work, we're being asked to um, focus, uh, sorry, I'm getting a lot of calls from clients. Um, we're being asked to focus on um, our intention. Um, you know, in the water realm, you can just journey and journey and trip and play and, and, and all the rest of the stuff, and it's really cool. So in the fire realm. But in the earth realm, it's saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? How are you going to... Um, turn this vision into a reality, it's asking you to um, look for intention. Now when I go journey for clients or for myself, um, I go into the inner worlds, um, but I always have an intention, a focus, and um, there's a purpose for this. And when you set the intention, it shoots out into the matrix as an algorithm and it sets the standard for what you're going to experience to just go out into the world and trip out in the world and just say, well, let's just see what happens is a, a wonderful notion for a fiery, watery personality, maybe. Um, but not so much for an earth and air type. We want to we wanna be sensible. We want to be um, wise about the way we move through the world and how we relate to others. And in that, it doesn't get in the way. Anyway, um, it calls for a state of awareness about who we are, where we are, and um, to come into the Eckhart Tolle realm of be here now. Um, now, you know, I, I strongly, um, in, especially in this realm, I think, or in all realms actually, be here now is the, the ultimate answer to, to um, a state of being. Um, but this is calling us into a very creative action. It's, it's saying, yes, good, be here now, but what are you going to do now that you're here? What are you doing? Um, how are you um, how is what you're doing and, and the way you're living supporting the vision that you have for yourself? And how is that going to create a world that you want to be a part of? Uh, so uh, that's a big part of it. There's a, you know, a part of it that is self-critiquing, that um, calls you 
um, out when you write it down on paper it looks a lot different than it does in your dreams or in your vision and that's good it's grounded it's deeper it's more uh, real um, but that's a great place to be because then you have the opportunity to um, to easily course correct um, because it's in words words when they're like this are magical because they confine reality or they define reality in a linear logical way the left brain masculine analytical mind has a place and it's a very good place so right brain uh, fire and water side the right side of the spiral is very good for you know vision inner and outer um, the left side if you look at it it's the first constructive phase of, of the, it is the constructive half of the spiral but it's also more linear logical more kind of um, deductive and let's let's come together um, bring it together and make a plan so that's kind of uh, um, about earth so um, what are what are some of the things about um, I just wanted to say a few things about Solab in the middle of this. Um, my intention towards Solab is, um, is to create this meeting place. When we have a place um, where the elements come together that we all share in common, we can come in and meet each other in these common grounds, whether it's a fire realm of vision, water realm of inner vision and emotion, or the earth realm of bringing it all together and organizing our experience and our physical health and wellness, which is a big part of the earth, somatic, and the air realm, which is about mindfulness and relationship. When we can meet around these common areas, we can bring in our uniqueness and intact we can bring in our ancestry, we can bring in our complexity intact, but yet meet in these common areas and speak to those common areas. And in that way, I believe we break down this um, shooting on ourselves and other people, saying you should do this or you should do that, or this way is antiquated and dying and this way is the way to go. I, I'm not a big fan of that personally. And, in Solab, um, it's not something that I'm going to support. Um, I, I do support everyone bringing for their vision, whether I believe in it or not. Belief is not my thing. Um, it's not about that, but it's about um, offering a space for people to share their authenticity in a way that's safe, in a way that they feel comfortable. So I'm not going to judge or evaluate any of you for um, for. Um, what, where you at, or where you are on your journey? Only in the way that we engage each other. Um, my big goal in this is to get beyond. Um, I don't want to say get beyond gurus and and self helpism because I kind of do, but I, but at the same time, that's a judgment. Um, if that's where you're at, it's beautiful. Um, but what I am saying is, bring in your wholeness, come together in this way, and. Do it in a way with respect for another person. Do it res with respect to allowing others to have their particular views. And, um, and share your view from your perspectives. Um, um, instead of saying, we're like this, say, I'm like this. I believe this, or I feel this, or I practice this. It's a beautiful way to approach it. Um, and, and you can do it as a form of sharing, and I think that's very, very powerful. Um, we, we need to share our uniqueness. Um, what we don't need is to be told that our way is incorrect or our, you know, this way or that way is not appropriate because then we tend to shut down. Then we tend to feel judged and evaluated in a way that's not very constructive. And uh, so, you know, my job in the middle of Solab is to hold space for that. Um, I, I invite in all of your unique sharings, um, um, but I will be watching out for um, shooting. Uh, uh, this is what reality is. I, come on. <laughs> there is no inherent meaning in reality. It's what we created to be. So I want to hear what you're creating and what you're bringing into the world. I don't want to hear some idea uh, uh, that we all are this way. I mean, Sigmund Freud thought everyone wanted to have sex with their mother because his mother was a few years old, his stepmother was a few years older than him. 
an honest mistake to make, but projecting our experience on everyone else is sort of like a, um, you know, a beginning sort of mistake that we make. Um, share your experience as a unique experience that is beautiful and sacred, and but just do so with the understanding that uh, everyone sees the world in a very unique way. And if you speak from your truth, that will be all that is needed. People will see that and respond from their truth. And no one will feel judged or evaluated based on that. So that's my little commercial on that. Um, so, you know, I'm offering this alchemical way of moving through it. The fire, the water, the earth, the air. It's a definite pattern. And, and it definitely is the, the fundamental seed of, of uh, alchemy, of soul lab. And, and there's many different configurations in different systems, different traditions. They put the, organize the elements differently. The way that I'm offering it is the way that um, I've been offered it and the way that I've worked with it in my work. So I'm doing this because I can do this with authenticity and, and you know, 30 years, uh, uh, you know, at least 18, no, about 30 years of, of going through this and feeling comfortable with this method. I don't think it is the only model. I do see it as a way um, that um, we've seen um, in all different cultures how we develop through phase shifts in our lives. And I offer it this way, not as a fixed reality, but as a way for us to come together. So understanding the relativity of it, but also understanding the utility of it, which is an earthbound thing. Understand the utility of it without having to um, you know, either accept or deny it is, is a very valuable skill in this part of the coming together process. So, you know, in my offerings, I'm not trying to mansplain reality to you. I, 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 know, I know way too well that I could not do that. Um, it's just simply an offering of a way to see developing your vision and creativity in a way that can bring others from other traditions to help you and that you can help them and that we can all come together across platforms and no matter if you're a therapist or a physician or a lawyer or an artist, um, you can talk to people in a, where you are in your development uh, in a way that you can hear it and you can be heard, sort of thing. So, um, I just, uh, kind of in closing, I wanted to um, give a couple of awesome examples um, yeah, and in all authentic ways, they're, yes, they are. Um, my cousin Brittany, I want to give a shout out to her. She got into UPenn and um, not Penn State. And um, I'm so proud of her because she's fought really hard to, to achieve this. And um, she's come so far. Um, she's come from so many incredible challenges. I mean, to hear her story is, um, of her journey is um, painful in many ways, but also beautiful because she's so heartfelt and so empowered as a young woman. And, um, you know, she was telling me months ago, I'm going to get in a UPenn. I know this. This I'm already prepared for this. And I'm going to do beautiful things in the world. I'm never going to forget where I came from. I'm going to use this access to help the world and help those in need like I was growing up. And I'm going to make a difference in the world. So congratulations, uh, Brittany, on getting in to University of Pennsylvania. Go, uh, um, go Franklin, <laughs> Benjamin Franklin, right? Um, so she got in and she said, you know, honestly, I told you that, yes, I'm going to get in. Yes, I'm going to get in. But the whole time I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, I don't know if I'm going to get in. I mean, there's always going to be this uncertainty in the middle of all of this, this, you know, fierce determination and this push, this drive to expand and germinate into the world. Um, they, they are dance partners, um, but that she didn't implode, that she didn't crumble, that she persisted, you know, she persisted, and that she followed her dreams, um, even though it was way beyond her um, vision of being um, invited into an Ivy League law program, um, she persisted and she got in, and, um, and it's a beautiful thing. And to hear her story is, um, it's just reminding me of how important it is that we support each other because um, 
it can be so intense and painful. Um, without support of, from uh, uh, those around us, um, it's just almost un unthinkably difficult and challenging to do this. So Solab um, is my dream of um, of creating a space so that others, especially the coming generations, don't have to go through this becoming process in a world that's trying to make us into what they want us to be. When we're coming here to be what we're designed to be and create a new world, this is something we need to support with each other. This is something that is extraordinary and needs to be nurtured and valued from all of us. We need to be here to support these unique visions. The old way was do what you're told. The new way is saying do what's in here. This isn't selfish. This is what will save the world. If you do what's out there, you will support something that is crumbling. I'm sure none of you this is a surprise. We're not here to serve a crumbling world. We're here to bring forward a beautiful reality that's coming from each one of us. The kingdom within us wants to come through. Will that seed grow into a beautiful tree? Will that acorn become a beautiful um, oak tree? Or will this uh, maple tree bring, bring uh, beautiful things to the world? It really depends on the environment and what supports them. Solab is designed conceptually and we're going to make sure technologically it's designed to support you on every stage of your path. We'll meet you where you're at. We want to help you get where you need to go to meet the right people, not just to get money. Money's cool. But mainly, how do you get support through these key areas, especially the areas of your development that are not your forte, that are not um, um, your, your strength. That's where you call on your friends. That's where you call on support. And that's where you kind of let go of this sort of protectionism and saying, I don't know. That's a beautiful word, or a beautiful phrase, I don't know. Because the moment you realize that none of us know is a moment we all start to say, well, who does? And who can help me? Um, just by putting the Solab group out, you guys have helped me work magic. Um, by seeing that there is a place for this, that there is a, um, uh, that this is helping people, it has empowered me to move into directions and break out of my own paralysis. Um, I've been in the middle of the earth realm for a long time. Uh, procrastination by perfectionism. Um, I had to perfect it and make sure, make sure, make sure, make sure all the elements were right because I did not want to be caught uh, short-handed or missing some fine detail of all of this. So that's my trap. Um, it wasn't until I started accepting that, putting it out there and embedding myself into the world that then would start, and, and, and within Facebook of all things, um, but that would start drawing in the resources that I need to get this project up and going. And now I have amazing women and men supporting this vision and seeing the value of it in a collective sense. And it's not about Kelly. It's not about me. I, I just want to give birth to this. I want to create a place for us to play in so we feel safe and supported. So we can bring together uh, out into the world a new world. Um, I, I'm a, uh, an absolute rebel in this, this, this uh, fashion. But I'm also a great uh, humanist. I, I really um, I hate suffering. I, I hate to see empaths suffer when they're so badly needed in this world. And we are going to create a place for you to make magic happen. We're going to create a place for you that you feel safe and you feel connected, not judged, but supported in ways that you need support. And you're also going to be invited to bring your wisdom and your strengths in to support others. We all have strengths and we all have challenges. We come together in these ways and they all start to match together. They all start to create something incredibly powerful. That's where we're heading with all of this. So, you know, we're going there. Um, my, my good friend Ray Ippolito, I'm going to give him a, a shout out. I don't know if he's gotten on this. He might not even know how yet. He has been kicking and screaming about getting on Facebook and how he was not going to be co-opted into this, this field. I mean, this guy is a master musician. He's a master storyteller. He's, a, he's an incredible jester. He's, a, um, he's, 
He's a phenomenal human being, and uh, everyone that knows Ray Ippolito loves Ray Ippolito. Yet, he has this inherent fear of technology um, and this technosphere of Facebook and all the rest because of some very real concerns. It's not that it's not real. Um, but the calling was too big for him not to at some point can see to the reality that we have to meet the world halfway. And thank you, Ray, for doing that. Because uh, he put out this um, incredible Facebook page, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. Uh, is that right? I think so. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'll share it with you on this thing. But, um, but all of a sudden, it's coming to life because he's accessible. So um, we at some point have to um, meet the world halfway. We have to concede there's a, adaptation is about accommodating the world and what it is. We don't get to vote on technological advancement. Uh, sure, it'd be nice to be out in pristine uh, forest and, and you know eating mushrooms or eating you know, live plants or whatever all day long. I like that idea. Um, yet, to be effective in the world and to meet the world, we need to be where the world is. So being on a mountaintop is beautiful. Being in the world is important. So with Ray coming into this, he uh, understands reaching out. He says, I need support here. I'm feeling like I don't understand this world, and I, and, but I, I do know that it could be good, but I just don't know how to do it. Um, uh, talk to me. And that's what we should be doing with each other, talking to each other, sharing our vulnerability. Um, here's a very powerful guy. He's a master of his craft, um, yet um, we're all beginners because we're uh, a true innovators constantly bringing themselves into places that or we, we feel inept. I, I certainly feel that way. So um, that's a, a couple little stories that I wanted to tell about this. Um, as some of you might have seen, um, I, 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 my beard's a little bit shorter. Um, uh, I, was, uh, I got sick last week and I decided I, at that time where I was hallucinating with a head cold to, to trim my beard and, and I whacked off half of it accidentally so I just decided to shave it down and my five and eight year old looked at me and they freaked out. You know, they, they, they're like, I don't, I don't know you. I mean, I'm their dad, right? But again, change is something that's so hard for us. Um, we like what seems familiar. We like, we like to know that we understand the world or that we, we have it under control. Dad looks like this, so therefore the world is okay. When dad turn, shaves off his beard, all of a sudden the, the world goes cuckoo. Um, we all have that part of our nature that fears change and that fears vulnerability, uncertainty, um, the unknown, the, the new faces that come through. Um, but you know the beard grows back it um, and it does um, um, but different from beards we not just we don't just grow back we grow strong we grow into our next phase of who we're becoming and that I think is a really vital message here um, our becoming is a shedding of the old selves to constantly open space for the new self to come through and in that we're constantly asked to sacrifice to sacrifice our egoic identification with who we think we are, think, 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 or who we believe ourselves to be, or who we sense ourselves to be. This is saying let go and open into the unknown, the mystery unfolding of who you are, what you're becoming, and know that if you're connected, and it's true, we need to have meditations, we need to have visualizations and journeys to invite the connection with Source, um, from Mother Earth and from the heavens, the wisdom from from the two to come together in harmony in the heart so that we can awaken a consciousness that is in harmony and balance with um, our higher, lower, and conscious nature, the three-part self, so that we can um, live into and out of this, so that it informs and enlightens from the heart all the cells of our being as the one being of our physical human being, and it moves into the field and transforms everything like that. See that fire in the heart shining? And send that love. The heart is a conductor of the orchestra. And if you see that beautiful love and joy energy connected with heaven and earth in the middle of this torus of light where the seeds of the apple, the new way, are created, this is where we move uh, through the earth phase. This is where we seed this new way forward. 
and this is where we find our strength and our power and our vision and we stay with it we don't implode from the heaviness we um, invite the resources to come and support our rooting down and growing up so coming from the heart smiling in seeing that beautiful ruby red light of love and joy shine throughout the world around us throughout the soil of our becoming and seeing it going up into the surface into the air and creating this beautiful tree of life that we are invited to um, become part of uh, become in the world so earth two we're heading to earth three um, next week uh, which is perfecting this. It's like uh, this phase is going to be about germinating and really connecting all of our sources. The final week of Earth is about um, perfecting that form, perfecting our medicine, how we're going to be in service to the world. And it becomes an actual plant. It becomes a thingness. But for now, just bring it together. And even if you're already there, you can share with others your process. If you've just put out a book or put out a movie, um, please share your process with others because that's how we grow. We learn from each other share your process if you're just in the early stages of it no matter where you are in the spiral you can still um, gain a lot from just imagining being in this state right now for the next week hold this space just um, throughout your experience of of how am I connecting to the world and drawing these resources in how am I germinating a seed of a new way a new reality into the world who's supporting me and and what is the world um, uh, need from me and how am I here to be in service in this way so thank you guys for being here um, any questions you have please uh, send to me uh, I love the text and the emails and messages and post and the supporting each other holy cow um, it's a dream come true and we are gathering forces together we have some amazing people that are going to support this uh, movement Let's keep moving forward and incredible things are coming. We are coming together. This is our time. I love you guys. Have a great day.